So last week I posted a video on the channel sharing the behind the scenes of me speaking at a marketing conference here in London. And I was sharing snippets of the presentation from the event where I was breaking down what it actually takes to sell your products and services online because it has nothing to do with product quality and has everything to do with the quality of your marketing. And so I shared little bits of that presentation and they asked you to share with me in the comments if you'd like to see perhaps the entire presentation and there were tons and tons of you that wanted that. So I've convinced the uh, event owner to share with me the presentation, give me permission to share it with you and I'm gonna put it right here in this video. So strap in, take notes from this presentation, you're gonna absolutely love it. You're gonna learn a ton about marketing and how to scale your business to potentially seven or even eight figures if that's what you're looking to do. So without further ado, here I am. What we're gonna talk about is how to create a marketing message that builds unbreakable trust with your prospects and has them throwing their credit card at you. We need to bake in and build into our marketing the stuff that is needed that will work with any campaign, any funnel, and any traffic strategy, okay? The presentation I'm gonna share with you right now is the keynote presentation I opened my conference with uh, called AdCon. And it went down an absolute treat. People loved it. And I'm going to be sharing it with you as well right now. It's, like I said, integral to everything. It took me an hour to present it there. I've got 45 minutes. So we're going to have to go fast. So get ready to take some notes. Anyone here concerned about competition or potential market saturation? Anyone? A little bit concerned? Getting busy in the marketplace? There's a few honest people in the room, some liars as well, some people uh, misillusioned, okay? The reality is there is a lot of competition. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of people that do the same stuff that you do, and we do get concerned about this, whether you are willing to admit it or not. We think, oh, there's already enough coaches. There's already enough of this thing. I'm just going to be competing in amongst uh, a really, really large crowd. But the reality is it's marketing that wins clients, not product quality. It's marketing that wins clients. So even if you feel your competition has a bigger brand, more clients, more success stories, they have things that look bigger, it's marketing that wins. So we can be a small fry, have really phenomenal marketing campaigns, and we will still win. Have you ever purchased a program that sounded absolutely awesome, you decided, and you got that knot in your stomach, and you decided, I'm going to invest, I'm going to do it again, and it turned out to be a bit of a disappointment? Has anyone had that experience with any product before? Okay? Everyone with their hand up is proof that the marketing won you as a client, not product quality, because you couldn't have seen it. Couldn't have seen the delivery until you were on the inside. So it's marketing that won. So it points again to the fact that it's marketing that wins clients, not product quality. I'm really, really excited about this topic because we're going to unpack this word marketing a little bit. And for those of you that are taking notes, there's really two main things that go into this word marketing. It's positioning and it's messaging. These are the two things that you need. Not only that, but it's also marketing, which is the positioning and the messaging, that wins clients over funnels or traffic strategies. A lot of people will tell you, I found a new loophole on social media. It's amazing. We can get clients if we do this and do this, and it's sneaky, but it kind of works, and it'll work for a week, it'll die out. We're not looking for those things. What we're looking for is a grounding in marketing, and if we get it right, and if we do it well, we will forever be able to make this work. So a marketing message that wins clients comes down to five things, and we're going to unpack them very, very fast. So I suggest take notes on this and, uh, and actually implement it, because it will work for you. Okay? We're going to unpack the who, the what, the when, the how, and the why. Okay? So the who is who do we want to target? We've got to get really specific with that. Number two, what is unique about your message? Number three, when do we target them? This is a really, really important one and one that a lot of our clients misunderstand. So I'm going to try my best to unpack it. How are we going to then get their attention and why should they choose you? And I will always be able to make money grow businesses, and have a successful online company because I understand this stuff and I truly believe you will experience the same. And we just hit 938,000 in a single month with one of our companies because of this stuff, so it really works. So let's start with the who. Who do we want to target? 
you need to get clear on specifically who it is that you want to serve. Okay, when we start these businesses, when we launch courses, when we start offering coaching programs, we think that we just need to just put ourselves out there. No, we need to first decide who we want. And the more specific you are, the more attractive you'll become to those prospects. Casting a wide net in the beginning is a really bad idea. And this is advice that I see very, very frequently. And you've probably heard it as well. We, people just say, look, just, just build the website, just put yourself on social media, get out there, start producing content, and they'll come. So we cast this really wide net. We say, I'm a coach, I'm a fitness coach, and I can help you to grow your fitness business. And so we just put ourselves out there, we cast a wide net, and we just hope that the right people are drawn to us. And there is a little bit of truth in that. Some people will be drawn to you, your personality, your character, your story. There is some truth to that. But more importantly, we want to make it really clear that we understand the audience. We understand the prospects. And if we can do that, they will be even more drawn to us. So we don't want to cast a wide net. We want to get really specific. Okay? The more specific we get, the greater the chance it is that we win the client. And I'm going to prove it to you with one simple example, and I could give you 50 of these. Let's imagine we've got two photographers. The first photographer is not feeling hugely confident. They know they're a good photographer, but they're kind of new to business. And so to get their early clients, they think, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, be a, I'm just going to market myself as everything. I do headshots. I do weddings. I can do corporate stuff. I can do parties. I can do it all. So they put themselves out there and hope that their pictures draw in the clients. Photographer number two, specifically a wedding photographer. They don't do headshots. They don't do corporate events, and they don't do parties. They only do weddings. Now, let's imagine both of these photographers take equally good photos. Let's level the playing field. Equally good photos. When somebody is online looking for a wedding photographer, keep in mind, equally good photos. Someone's online looking for a wedding photographer. Who are they going to choose, photographer one or photographer two? Two, of course they are, right? But they take the same quality photo. So why wouldn't they go for one? Marketing, positioning, messaging. They position themselves as a wedding photographer so they won that particular client. Now let's swap out photographer two for a photographer that specializes in headshots. Equally good photos again. Someone's looking for headshots. Who's going to win? Photographer two. Photographer one is going to lose out every single time. And this is why some of you are losing out on the client every single time. It's because your marketing and positioning is very vanilla, and there's other people around you that are really specific, so they're winning the clients every time. And you're left wondering, why aren't you getting clients? And it's because of this. So think about these things here. I'm going to rattle through this really quickly, maybe take a picture. Which mini markets could you go into? You've got a wider market. How can you niche down just that little bit? What are your audience's specific problems? How long have they been struggling? Because we can speak to that. All of this helps our messaging. Okay? We position ourselves and we create a message to speak to the people that we are attracting. So how long have they been struggling? Let's speak to that. What have they already tried that didn't work? Where in the world are they? Perhaps there's something culturally we can speak to. Who do you feel most confident to help? This is a big one. This is something that I do. It's a very simple back and forth that I have with many of our clients. When they try to nail this down, I say, okay, well, have you had any clients already? Well, yeah, over the course of the last two years, you know, I've had this referral and this came in, and so I've had about 15 clients. Okay, and which of those clients did you feel most confident in your ability to help? Which industry were they in or what specific problem did they have? Well, it was mm, kind of this person and, and this person. Those are the ones that I really feel good about. Okay, then let's double down on it. By doubling down on it, we're not shrinking our potential to grow the business. We're actually niching down and getting specific so we can absolutely flourish in that little mini market. Is this making sense so far? You with me? Four of you. Great. All right. Who is typically drawn to you? We would do the same exercise with the 15 clients that we've already got. Of the 15 clients you've already got, have a look at your businesses as well. Who is it that seems to be coming to you and is attracted to you? Okay, well, of the 15, seven of them are kind of in the fitness space. Great, let's double down on it. 
or if you're a therapist or a counselor, whatever the case may be, okay, or your life coach, what's the majority of reasons why people are coming to you? And let's double down on it. Male, female, how old are they? You know, all of these things are things that we can be thinking about. And just a quick tip, how do you know if you've been specific enough? Keep digging until you feel uncomfortably specific. So you'll start to get into a mini market and you'll think, oh my gosh, is this really, uh, is, this, is this getting too small now? The answer is probably not. Uh, if you're starting to feel uncomfortably specific, that's actually a good thing. There's a guy called Andrew Arger. I don't know him personally, but he had a webinar that ran for a couple of years, was doing a million a month on this webinar consistently, and he was targeting accountants and CPAs. And that was it. He could have been doing business consulting. He could have been helping any service-based uh, business, but he didn't. He doubled down on accountants. And so every single accountant would come to him over another business coach that works with loads of different industries. So this, really, this stuff does work. And just don't go so far that your market is now too small. Just use common sense. Okay? Um, so Fez is one of our clients, and, and this is a prime example of doing a really simple exercise to just get that one layer specific. Fez was trying to sell online courses, and it just wasn't working. He was just trying to sell to everyone. He's in the fitness space. And so we, we just worked on this. It only took five minutes. He paid me 20 grand, so it was a good deal for me. But in that five minutes, we just said, what, who do you like helping? He said, well, I kind of prefer working with women, funnily enough, than men. Okay, great. Well, can, we, can we get an age in there? Okay, yeah, well, I suppose 40. Now, why 40? Well, because I know there's certain problems that they'll be having at that point. What are those problems? Well, maybe they've had a, you know, a kid at that point. They've had two. Their body's different to how it was in their 20s. So we start talking about all this stuff. So we just doubled down on it. Women over 40. And now he's had a webinar that's crushed it. He's done half a million with one webinar that targets women over 40 and teach them how to get in shape. And his entire webinar, his entire slide deck focuses on that demographic. You, you getting this? Are you truly getting this? Great. There's five of you now, so we're working on you. <laughs> All right. Um, we must implement what I call the push and the pull in your quest for clients. The push and the pull is that we're pulling in the people that we want and we're actually actively pushing away the, the clients that we don't want. So don't try to hoard clients and just anyone that's got a credit card and a pulse and willing to give you their digits, you will accept them as a client. We want to be protecting your business in the long term. okay? And so we actually want to be repelling the wrong people. And by doing that, you will get into a bit of a flow and you'll get into some momentum of attracting the people that you actually want. So that's the who. Number two is the what. What is unique about your message? We must present what we have in such a way that it stands out above the noise. Okay? You may very well have a business and a product and a coaching service that is very similar to other people in your space. Now, I'm actually going to ask you to be honest just for a second and raise your hand if you do feel that you have something great, but you do feel you sit amongst other people that kind of do a very similar thing. Anyone feel like that? Okay, thank you for the honesty. A few of you. Okay, so that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that because you still provide something great. So what we need to do is position ourselves above everyone else. Present what we have in such a way that it stands above the noise. So how do we stand out? I've got a few examples for you. Okay, we can either be a bit of a polarizing character. Let me just go back to that slide. Forgive me. We can either be a bit of a polarizing character, we can have controversial views, we can uh, news hack and we can jump on big trends, and we can have a, a, a view that perhaps not everyone will agree with. And, and you're starting to be very polarizing, where some people will start to hate you, some people will absolutely love you when we start buying your stuff. So you can think about, is there any way in your industry where you can be a bit polarizing? Another option is to present an opposite view to the market. So we can figure out, what is it about our stuff? What is it about what we teach? that can be positioned as actually opposite, counter to what the market is currently saying. Your delivery might be the same, but the way you position it in your marketing might be a bit unique, a bit fresh. We're going to say some stuff that stirs the pot a little bit. The, the example that I like is just an obvious one. There's loads of more specific ones, but intermittent fasting, when that first became a big thing, however many years ago, when intermittent fasting first became a thing, um, you know, th this was an opposite view to the market. 
all these breakfast cereal adverts saying that you've got to have breakfast in the morning, most important meal of the day. And then you've got intermittent fasting saying, actually, you want to skip breakfast altogether and not eat until uh, lunchtime. It's a complete opposite view. And that's why brands like Kino Body, if you've ever heard of them, really blew up really quickly because they were one of the first to really do this in a big way. And it was like, wow, this is so opposite to what I'm hearing in the, in the industry at the moment that I kind of feel drawn in. Because the power in this is that if you really think about this, we're going a little bit deep here now, but if you really think about this, everyone in your market who's still actively searching for a solution, a solution that you can uh, provide and a problem that you can solve, if they're still actively searching for it, chances are they've tried stuff already that's not worked. You with me? With me? So they're still struggling and they've tried stuff already. So if that's the case, if we come out with another marketing campaign that talks about the same problem with the same type of solution, they're going to start to get blind to it because they're going to say, I've tried that before. But if we can come in and position it in an opposite view to the market, they're going to go, oh, great, something fresh. Something fresh. Maybe this is the thing that will work for me. And once we get them in, they kind of realize that you're teaching a very similar thing, but now you've already got them in and you can deliver a great result for them. Make something old sound new. It's another way of doing it. You've all heard me talk about webinars before. Webinars are now no longer sexy. They're incredibly powerful, and it's still the front runner for what we do in our marketing. All the stuff that I'm teaching you here is what we take and we put into our webinar presentations. But webinars are, are no longer sexy. So if I have a, a training that just says, how to use webinars to grow your business, you're going to go, oh, yeah, moving on. Don't care about that. Whereas if I say how I've been using the no-pitch webinar blueprint or how I'm using the charm webinar approach, I actually used that one once, and I just made up an acronym. I forced an acronym just so that I could have a word that sounded unique. Well, I've heard of webinars, but what's the charm webinar approach? That sounds really interesting. I also used the forgotten funnel. I did an ad campaign where I was talking about the forgotten funnel. Everyone's focused on this type of funnel and this and this and this, and people have forgotten the one that is most profitable, most effective. Oh, gosh, what's that one? Get them hooked in, get them into my funnel, and then I reveal the fact that it's still a webinar, but now I've got their attention to unpack it. You can bring a fresh way of communicating your thing, very similar to the two options above. And you can elevate your solution above other options. Now, this is um, it's really powerful, actually. And I've used this a number of times. Facebook ads, still absolutely fine, right? In fact, they're kind of making a comeback. I've been a big advocate for YouTube ads for a very long time. And YouTube ads are still freaking awesome. And they're a match made in heaven for webinars. But Facebook ads are kind of making a comeback. They had a bit of a dip for a while. And they were just kicking everyone off and, and uh, upsetting everybody. But they're kind of giving accounts back now. And the numbers are looking good again. But I had a YouTube ad webinar that ran for so long. And I had a hissy fit over Facebook because they kicked me off the platform. And so I thought, right, I'm done with you guys. So in my webinar to promote YouTube ads, I did this. I elevated my solution above the others. So what I'm doing in my webinar, let's imagine that their knowledge of the solution is here. If I start to position YouTube ads, talk about how great it is, talk about how good the targeting is, talk about how profitable it can be, well, I'm getting them up a few notches, but here's where they already were. And they're already thinking, OK, well, this sounds good, but I could go back to what I've already seen other people talking about. Now, if I can start to poo-poo all the other options, if I can say, and here's the issues with Facebook, Facebook's this. It's not good for this. They're doing this. They're kicking people off the platform. They're disapproving ads. Now, the distance between my two solutions, or, or rather the two possible solutions to them, has actually been increased. So I can elevate my solution only so much, but I can actually create even more distance, the fall from what they're learning on my webinar to the next best solution in their mind has now increased. And with a bigger fall makes them go, oh, I feel like a fool if I was to leave this webinar and not take action on what I'm learning here. OK, and I'm going to ask you again. I want a bit more energy this time. Are you with me? Yeah. Making sense? Yeah. OK. So then we've got the when. When do we target them? This one is critical. I love this one. OK, we want to catch people later on in their journey for a solution. Now, you're going to have questions like, well, how do we do that? And we're going to unpack it a little bit in the time that we've got. If somebody has only just figured out that they have a problem, 
do you think they're going to spend $10,000 on a coaching solution for that problem? Yes or no? No, they're not. But if somebody's had a repeat problem for 10 years and it's affecting every area of their life, that's when they're far more likely to take action on that. So we want to be catching people later on in their journey. How much someone is willing to pay is in direct alignment with how desperate they are for a solution. So if we just look at time over increased desire for a solution, if somebody's first looking into an issue that they've got, ah, just sudden, I've looked in the mirror this morning and thought I should probably figure out some kind of weight loss solution. <laughs> Maybe I'm putting on just a little bit too much now and, uh, and I, should, I, should, I should dive into this. What was their first port of call? It's probably not even to go in and uh, get some personal training. Maybe they'll make themselves feel good by signing up to the gym again and never go. But they'll also go onto YouTube and Google and start just searching. They just start looking. And now they're being fed even more videos on that topic. And some people, that's as far as they'll go. It's as far as they'll go. They won't even start reaching into their pocket to buy some stuff. They'll just stay there. Well, now some more time has passed. Now their searching is getting more aggressive. No, I really, really don't like these bingo wings. I've got to figure this thing out. So now they're searching even more so, maybe daily. Maybe they're becoming addicted to searching for a solution here. And then the money bag drops. They decide to dig really deep. They sit down, they get comfortable. They've got that, that fuzzy feeling in their belly. And they invest that $7 for that ebook. I did it. I committed to myself. And so they invest $7. And then some people drop off at that point. And the more time that passes, the more likely they are to invest in a high ticket solution. That client I told you about, Fez, he charges $3,000 to work with these women over 40 for a period of six months to help them get in shape. $3,000. We might say, well, why are they not just going and getting a personal trainer for 30 pounds an hour, 40 pounds an hour? Why are they not just buying an online uh, you know, follow along training program and just do it every morning and keep themselves accountable because they've tried that already. They've been going on this journey for quite a long time now and it's not been working. So they get to a point where they're like, I'm serious about this. I've got to make this work. So we need to position ourselves as a premium offering in your space to be able to attract the premium clients. If you want these people, if you want the people that will pay the high ticket amounts, if you want to be able to charge more than your competition, even if you don't have as big of a brand as them, it actually starts with the positioning of that. If you have an issue with your body and you've got a doctor that's charging, I'm talking, let's say, over in America now because we've got our, our um, NHS here, but let's say there's a doctor that's charging, I don't know, $30 an hour and the office looks really grimy and everything's cheap and you, you're going to assume the quality of information you're gonna get is the same. Whereas if you heard about this mysterious doctor that people were talking about that charged $5,000 for a consultation and a solution to the problem, $5,000, and there was a bit of a wait list to even speak to someone in his office to see if you could be um, you know, awarded a space as a client on their books, Although it's so much more expensive, there's a part of you that goes, oh, flipping heck, I want that one. I want that one because I assume the value is there. So even if you have a smaller business, if you have really good positioning, really good messaging, and a premium price, you will act, and your, your confidence has to follow this. So you'd, you'd have to leave here. If you take this advice from me, you'd have to leave here and genuinely believe that you're worth it. If you don't, you've got a confidence issue and would have to work on that. So the confidence has to be there, but if you just position yourself up here, you will naturally start to attract clients you actually like working with. They're much better people too. They don't whine, they don't complain. <laughs> the more you charge, the, the, the better the client you get. It's just always been the way. We have clients now that we just love hanging out with. We invite them into the office. I'm friends with them. I go out to dinners with them. You actually become friends with your clients because they're, they're, they're nice people. And there's a premium version of just about everything. If you're thinking my industry, there just might not be anyone in that industry that will pay a high ticket price. The reality is you're limiting your view of what's possible, truly. There's maybe one or two exceptions to this in thousands and thousands of industries. 
more often than not, you're just limiting yourself to what's possible. There's a premium version of, of pretty much everything you can think of, and we just need to position ourselves as such so that we can attract the Bugatti clients, not the Ford clients. That's what we want. Is this helpful, by the way? Yeah? Okay. Number four. How are we going to get their attention? How are we going to do it? Okay. Well, the first thing for the recipe of how we're going to get their attention is the three things we've already talked about. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to get their attention because we have first decided who is it that we want. If we decide who we want, if we get really specific with that, if we allow our messaging and our positioning to be tailored to that person, that type of problem so specifically, they're going to naturally be drawn to us. I call it displayed understanding, in case you want to write that down. Displayed understanding. We want to display to our audience that we get them, we understand them, and that we are right there with them in their, in their problem. I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but you're scrolling through Facebook or you're clicking on YouTube videos and ads are popping up. And most of them we just skip, right? We skip, 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 or we scroll, scroll, scroll. And every now and again, something happens in the first five to ten seconds of an ad where we just go, huh, that, kind of, that, that spoke to me just a little bit. So I'm going to give this person a moment more of my time. Anyone had that experience? Yeah, I, I have it every now and again. The good marketers in our space can achieve that feeling. And it's like, huh, you, just, you got my attention just a little bit because you said something that related to me. And so now that ad starts to unpack and there's more stuff. And if we get to the end of that two-minute video ad, or if we get to the end of that written ad on Facebook that's got a bit of text in it, if we get to that point, and they've really spoken to me, my problem, my situation, and I feel understood. What am I going to do next? I'm going to click. They've got these micro moments of my attention. My attention has been more and more focused on them to the point where I go, okay, I'm going to perform the next action now, and I'm going to click. That's one of the most important things at the start of any marketing campaign. Can we get these people to click on our ad, but can we get what I like to call a qualified click? Not all clicks are created equal. That's worth remembering and writing down because this is why some of these traffic hacks are just distracting you from what's actually going to get you results. There'll be people that pop up and say, I found a new secret traffic loophole that you can get 10,000 clicks for 20p. You're like, oh, 20p for 10,000 clicks, 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 clicks. That's all I want. No, clicks are not created equal. 10,000 of those people could click on your ad, come through to to your website or your sales funnel and not like what they see. So they click off, okay? What's the point of getting 10,000 clicks if 10,000 people click straight back off again? That's not what we want. We want a qualified click. We want someone clicking with some intent to move forward. That's why this stuff's so important and that's why we need to bake it into every stage of the marketing. If we have an ad that doesn't just try to prematurely get the click, but actually educates them ever so slightly in the ad itself before we get the click, now we've got someone that's going, hmm, I like, I'm liking what I'm hearing here. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I would like to go to the next stage. This is how we then get high opt-in rates. This is how we get people actually moving through the funnel. If you've got people bouncing into your funnel and bouncing straight back out again, your messaging on the front is probably way off. All your messaging on the front is not matching the next page that they're clicking on. If those two things aren't matching perfectly, they're going to bounce straight back off the page. So we first figure out who it is that we want to target, and everything is tailored towards them. Then we create a message that is uh, positioning what we've got unique, something they haven't heard before, making something old sound new, coming up with a fresh wrapper, for what we've got going on, and that's going to really help get their attention as well. And then, of course, we're going to speak to the people that are later on down the line. We're going to get them with a premium price tag so that we're positioned as premium. But at the same time, and this is the other key, we're also going to be saying things in our ad that speak to those people. Okay, get this. I'm going to be saying things in my ad like, hey, have you been trying to lose weight for what feels like forever? Years and years have gone by. You've been just constantly thinking about this. 
Maybe maybe it all started where you just first realized you couldn't fit into that lovely red number that you used to love. And then that turned into every day you'd wake up, look in the mirror. You just didn't really feel proud of what was there anymore. But life was getting in the way. You tried to go to the gym. That wasn't working. Maybe you've had a gym membership for three years now. You haven't even been able to go. You're wondering if there's going to be a solution for you, but you're so busy with the kids that you can't even find the time and you, you are just drowning in this feeling of this is how I'm going to have to live for the rest of my life. What if there was actually a solution? What if there was a solution for women specifically over 40 with how much time you have available to make this work, understanding exactly where your body is at and for us to reverse these effects of weight gain so quickly you'll start to realize, you'll start to wonder why you didn't take action on something like this a little bit quicker. There is actually a way to make this work. I'd love to teach you more about this. I've got a webinar, it's going to break it all down. Yada, 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 off we go. So I'm speaking to the person I want in that, that could have been an ad right there. Yeah, I'm speaking to the person that I want, but I'm saying things that allude to the fact they've been on this journey for quite some time. You with me on this, yeah? Okay, six, wonderful. Okay. So we first endeavor to understand who our client is so that we can create a compelling message that gets their attention. I've talked about displayed understanding there, but really the goal is to articulate your prospect's problem better than even they can themselves. Just so you know, my time is gone for those of you at the back. Okay. Sometimes your prospect and the, and, and the prospects that you actually want, okay, check this out, they are so deep in the problem and not having a solution, they've kind of already forgotten which way is up. I teach it like this to my clients. What we are doing, what we're endeavoring to do, is to find the people that are truly drowning in the problem. They don't even know which way is up now. Yeah? And our goal is to come along with our little rowboat, pick them out of the water and at least just put their feet on a bit of a foundation and at least show them which way is up. And we do that by describing to them how they feel, what they've got going on, what's likely going around their head right now, the things they've probably tried before that isn't working. And if we can describe all this stuff, they're going to start to have this fresh revelation. Yeah, that, that is how I feel. I'm kind of just like in this feeling of, Ugh, this just isn't working. And what you've just described is pretty much my solution. So now their feet's on a firm foundation. Okay, right, I understand which way is up now. Great. Would you like me to take you on this journey? Because I can plop you back in if you want. Now you know which way's up. I can let you go and you can scroll past. Or we could go on this little journey together. It's called a sales funnel. <laughs> All right. That's what we're trying to do. We can get to this. Is this helpful, by the way? I'm going fast, aren't I? But is this helpful? Okay, good. Because I know there's a lot in here. I'm packing a lot in. But it's such an important topic. So we can achieve this with, with pains and gains, okay? We want to figure out the pains of our audience and also the gains of our audience, and we can use both of those uh, as leverage in our messaging. What are their pains? How are they feeling? What are their frustrations? We just make a big list. My advice to our clients is, look, take an A4 piece of paper, lined, just go sit in a coffee shop, Turn your phone off, don't take your laptop, and just sit and just think. The best way, you can use AI and ChatGPT, tell me all the pain points of these people, and they'll give you some. But I don't think there's anything better than just sitting down and just thinking, just brain dumping, because you know what it is you teach better than a piece of AI, right? You know it, you get it, you, want it, you know who you're wanting. Maybe AI can help you, of course it can. And where it's going is quite terrifying <laughs> and exciting at the same time but we want to just get all this out on paper and then gain points. What do they want? What do they want so that we can speak to them? Final point. Hopefully you're still with me. Why should they choose you? Why should they choose you? There's really a couple of things. You've demonstrated that you understand them, where they're at and what they want and need. So they'll choose you because you've done that. If you think about someone like Tony Robbins, Okay, big public figure in the personal development space. He had to start somewhere. He had to start with no brand, no team, and no testimonials. So it's not a good enough excuse to say, ah, oh, it's okay for Tony. He can keep winning clients because he's got this big brand. Yeah, but what about where he started? We, we skip over that bit. We will have to start there. Oh, yeah, but he started 20, 30 years ago when it was so much easier. Another excuse right there. You could argue that we have it easier now than someone like Tony had 20 or 30 years ago. 
Our ability to put ourselves out there and start to build a brand and build an audience and scale this thing is arguably much easier now. So all of these things that are bouncing around your head are just excuses. If we can do this, if we can demonstrate that we understand them, where they're at, what they need and what they want, and if we can articulate it better than even they can, we're going to start to have them choose you. Now, a couple of extra tips. Once we have their attention, we are in a time in marketing right now where we must do this. We must lead with value. I truly believe gone are the days where you could just slap up an ad that had no value attached to it, no training, nothing of that sort, and we just have an ad that just says, hey, do you want to train your dog? Come to our next class. It's next week. Click this button. No, we're past that now. And the people that still do that are making a huge mistake. They're burning cash, or they're a huge company that just have a marketing department with a budget for ads and just needs to get it spent. We've got to be a bit more careful uh, about what we do. So we're at a time now where the law of reciprocity will kick in if you do this. Now, we've got to do it strategically. There's got to be very clear call to actions at the right times in your funnels, but we've got to leave a value. That's why I like webinars. Absolutely head over heels for them. <laughs> They've made me so much money because it's, 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 a, it's the perfect setup. We get their attention with an ad. We have them register for a webinar, which builds our email list. And the sales message is baked into the value. It's absolutely amazing. Same thing with other types of funnels that I'm sure you'll learn about over the next three days. But ask yourself when you're planning your next sales funnel, is there value in here somewhere? Is there value in here somewhere? If you imagine, I call this the conversion timeline. I don't have a slide for this. I wasn't planning on saying this. I, there's a thing called the conversion timeline. Let's imagine that for you to get someone to convert into a client, we need to get them to a 10. And before they've heard of you, they're a zero. Yeah? Our marketing can do a lot of the heavy lifting and can get them up to a seven or eight before perhaps we speak to them on the phone. How many of you uh, take enrollment conversations? You speak to people on the phone to become a client? Quite a few of you? OK. So we can try to get them up to that kind of seven or eight before we get them on the phone. It makes those conversations so easy. Often, oftentimes, you have clients selling themselves to you because they want to be a client because they've loved what they've seen. We led with value. Whereas if you want to do the old school way, I mean, go ahead. No value on the front. But taking this example of phone sales, what you're really doing is you're only getting them up to a one. And the one is they just now know who you are, perhaps. They've seen you. Maybe they saw you a couple of times. They said, oh, let me see what this person's all about. They book a call. They're up to a one, maybe a 1.5. And then you wonder why you get on the phone, and you've got all this resistance. And they don't seem interested yet. And you go for two hours on this conversation, and they don't sign up and become a client. And again, you're wondering why. It's because we didn't leave any value. So now you've given yourself such a hard job on the other side. You've got to get them from a 1 to a 10 on the phone. Very, very hard to do. Near impossible, actually. So we've got to lead with value. And then it's about time. <clears throat> then we've got to make sure that we're spending time with our prospects so that they can receive the value that we've got. It's not enough to just say, right, I provided value in a quick two-minute video. No, it's the length of time. I believe Matt talks about it as the, is it the trust timer? Yeah, is that right? Great concept. What is it? Trustometer. Oh, he's changed the name. It's got an upgrade. Woo. Time. How much time are they having with you and receiving this value? And then they're likely to sign up to become a client. So that's how you create a marketing message that wins clients. 